The Trade Development Authority of Pakistan has promised to take all necessary steps to facilitate the ease of doing business between Nigeria and the country. Chief Executive Officer of Trade Development Authority of Pakistan, Mr. Mohammed Mutiwala, made the promise while speaking at a meeting with Nigerian entrepreneurs participating in the 2024 Engineering and Healthcare uh, Forum in Lahore, Pakistan. The meeting comes in furtherance of efforts by both countries to strengthen their partnership. He told the 65 men business, uh, Nigerian businessmen and women at the meeting that Pakistan is placed with the depth of partnership it has with Nigeria. The chief executive officer assured the Nigerian delegation that Trade Development Authority of Pakistan will look into some of the areas of concern it has identified in the course of the show to promote the transfer of knowledge between both countries for mutual benefits. Let's get talking now. The Central Bank of Nigeria is set to hold its first monetary policy committee meeting under the new governor, Mr. Olayemi Kadoso, on February 26th and 27th. The first MPC meeting under the new CBN management comes at a time when Nigeria's economy is facing several challenges as the meeting provides a crucial opportunity for CBN to roll out an effective monetary policy scheme that will help stabilize the economy and boost investors' confidence. But well, for more on this perspective, I'm being joined, or for more perspective around this issue, I'm being joined by the Chief Economist at Deloitte, Nigeria, Ms. Dam Damilola Akimbami. Thank you so much. Uh, it's good to have you on the program. Thank you, Tolu. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Yes. Uh, well, I'd like to look at what uh, Mr. Kadoso has been doing after the bankers' dinner, uh, where he said uh, a lot of work will be done and all of that. We've seen repatriation partly being done for airlines and all of that. Slow and steady, not making so much noise. I would ask you that, what do you think would be on the front burner when they gather on the 26th and 27th to discuss around monetary policy at this time? What is running through your mind? Well, the focus for um, this meeting, in my own opinion, I mean, it's the first meeting for the year, and more importantly, it's the first meeting under the new um, CBN leadership. So what everyone will be looking out for would be, um, what's the guidance for monetary policy for 2024? What are they going to say? What are they going to do? So everyone's going to be looking at the body language of the committee, reading in between the lines, more importantly, even what they are not saying. Because this first meeting, I would believe the focus would be on setting the tone um, for monetary policy, setting the guidance, letting the markets know exactly um, what the committee and the central bank, what its intentions are um, to address the main issues um, facing the economy, especially from a monetary policy point of view. And bear in mind that the central bank's primary objective is price stability. So I believe that the focus will be on setting the thrust for how um, the central bank plans to address or achieve its price stability uh, mandate, in addition to also ensuring um, there's exchange rate stability while keeping an eye on growth. But it's bearing in mind that whatever decisions are made with respect to monetary policy, th these would definitely have an impact on, on economic growth of the country. So I believe that this would be um, the focus um, okay, for the first meeting of the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank, and bearing in mind also that, I mean, the CBN governor has said that it's going to um, adopt an explicit, explicit inflation target. And so I think um, at this first meeting, they're going to be shedding one light on what their plans are, the thrust for monetary policy for the year 2024. Interesting. You took me to my next question. Yes, the CBN governor happed on the fact that he will focus on that inflation targeting framework to enhance effectiveness of monetary policy. While I ask what your understanding of this is, we've seen before now that um, we're just trying to increase rates to rein in inflation and seems not to be working. Yes, so inflation targeting, first of all, or explicit inflation targeting, what it means is that um, the central bank is going to use an explicit target for its inflation rate and then announce this rate to the public. So basically what that means is that it's going to pick a particular figure and work towards um, ensuring that or bringing its inflation rate to that um, figure for the year. And we have a lot of countries adopting um, such similar um, tactics because it's, it's um, inflation targeting is sort of like um, a monetary policy management framework. So for instance, you have um, the US Fed and the Bank of England um, adopting a 2% inflation target 
while some African countries, so for instance, um, the Bank of Ghana has more of like a target range. So for instance, the Bank of Ghana's uh, inflation target is 8%, plus or minus 2%, which is the symmetric band. You have um, the South African Reserve Bank, its own inflation target range is between 3 to 6%. While for the CBN in the past, it's, it's always been, I mean, 6 to 9%. So basically what that means is that you have a target and you work towards it. Now, you also mentioned that, I mean, we've been raising inter um, interest rates for the past um, couple of years. Now, I mean, almost two years, if not more. And inflation has been rising um, consistently despite the increase in interest rates. Well, you also have to understand that, possibly in Nigeria, inflation is largely driven by cost push factors and not necessarily a money supply. So using interest rates alone or higher interest rates alone to rein in inflation might not be sufficient. It's necessary, but it's not a sufficient condition. So that's why if you see the likes of Ghana, for instance, Ghana has a monetary policy rate of about 30%. Their interest, I mean, their inflation has fallen significantly, I mean, sharply lower than the NPR. So they are back to positive real interest rates. Meanwhile, Nigeria is still um, rising for that 18.75 NPR, inflation rate of almost 29%. So that's why I believe that, again, the CBN, the new CBN governor is also going back to the drawing table. Like, look, we've been increasing interest rates for two years plus now, and we're yet to win in inflation. We need to go back to the drawing board and figure out what exactly we need to do to address this. So, and they've also mentioned that they might go back to the use of orthodox monetary policy, which means basically going back to the traditional monetary policy tools of using the NPR, you know, discount rate, your, your reserve requirement ratios and what have you. So it will be interesting to see how that pans out. But I mean, using an explicit inflation targeting, it's not anything new. It's, it's, a, it's a monetary policy framework guideline that's been used globally, regionally. And like I said, even Nigeria, we've always had inflation targeting, but now it's going to be direct and targeted. Well, the big elephant in the room, uh, which is what we've been talking about, sure, since last year, even before last year, it's the foreign exchange crisis that we have at hand. Uh, the moment, in some cases, we hear even exchanging on the other market at about 1,300, 1,350 in some cases. But, uh, two questions in one. Do you think the CBN needs to improve or help support that market by improving liquidity or what really can be done? Allowing it to flow and allowing demand and supply control the market, well, with what we see, seems not to be the way to go. Well, I don't think you would find any central bank or monetary authority of any country that does not intervene once in a while or when necessary in, I mean, it's um, forex market. So, I mean, so if the CBN deems it fit and necessary to intervene, I mean, it can. The only difference right now is in terms of degree and frequency. So you do have central banks intervening once in a while if they deem it fit um, to support their currency. So if the central bank, I mean, in, in times when maybe, for instance, there's a significant shock of one of the currency and it feels that it needs to intervene or to boost liquidity in one form or the other to ensure stability, I mean, it, it's that, that, that's, that's fine. And more importantly is the second question that you asked, which is about addressing the liquidity issue, which I think is, in, like you rightly said, the elephant in the room. It's very simple. What are the three main sources of forex supply or forex influence in any country? One is your export proceeds. Two, your capital inflows. So in terms of your foreign direct investments, um, foreign portfolio investments, but more obviously foreign direct investments, which I mean stay for longer. And then also um, diaspora remittances. So what have been? What 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 is the government doing with respect to these um, three sources? So one, export proceeds. that the country generates forex from um, capital inflows. What are you doing to encourage investment, to encourage inflow of investment into the country, to, to attract investors to bring in their funds, and having an enabling business, business environment, and also diaspora remittances? So I think the answer is very simple. The government, and now by government, I'm referring to both physical and monetary authorities. They need to collaborate and come together to ensure or try and boost liquidity from these three sources. Now that's the supply side. As you're trying to address the liquidity to try and attract more um, forex into the system, you also have to address the demand side. And what is driving demand right now is 
panic buying. So there has to be certainty and clarity. And that's where um, policy decisions, policy uh, communication. So for instance, the first meeting of the MPC, you know, that's how we started our conversation. What will be the focus? What are they going to say? What will be the guidance? So saying one thing and sticking to your guns and ensuring that what you are communicating, you are also executing. Because again, there's a time frame between when policies are announced, when they're executed, when they're implemented, and when you feel the impact on the market. So if there's that trust, if that trust is, is built and, and, or restored in the policy authorities, I think to an extent you'll be able to address the panic buying and the arbitrage and the speculative buying. So on one hand, you're handling the demand side. On the other hand, you are trying to boost your export process. You are trying to create an enabling business environment to attract um, investments and funds. And that way, we should see some level of stability be restored in the forex market. Mm, interestingly, almost finally, uh, issues around that coordination, which you just touched on, which, which remains very important between, between the fiscal side and, and the monetary side. I would ask what you think is the situation at the moment. Are you seeing that handshake? Do we have that handshake as it should be? Uh, we see the fiscal side trying to work on tax reforms and other uh, issues, while the monetary side is also coming out with its own uh, policy uh, thrust. Do, how can we really, at the end of the day, achieve this all-inclusive growth that we all clamor for? Well, to achieve this all-inclusive growth, you need to see improved coordination and that handshake you referred to between fiscal and monetary authorities. And we have new leadership with, I mean, both arms right now. So it would be interesting to see how both parties come together because they need to come together to ensure that, I mean, fiscal policy is not undermining monetary policy. So for instance, you're talking about ways and means advances. The central bank needs to reduce and even possibly even stop that so that at least it can focus on its monetary policy. Because if you have fiscal policy that is expansionary and you, are, and you have monetary policy that is contractionary, you are going to um, undermine um, the effectiveness of these policy um, decisions. So monetary, poli monetary authorities need to focus on monetary policy. Fiscal authorities need to focus on fiscal um, policy. And then coming together, coming together with a cocktail of ideas and measures to create that inclusive growth. And creating that inclusive growth means that you have to invest in the real sector because those are the sectors that will create the jobs which will now do till into creating economic growth and overall um, development. And also even partnering with the private sector because fiscal monetary, this, this, this refers to the government, the public sector. You also have to work with the private sector if you want to achieve this desired growth that we're all talking about. So I, I believe that, I mean, this year, we, we should see improved coordination between um, both arms of government, fiscal and monetary policy, and then also increase the involvement or participation um, with the private sector. Now, on a final note, now so I'll let you go back to work. Uh, what sort of interventions are you expecting from, let me say, the CBN now? Before now, you know, we saw the CBN intervening everywhere. Agricultural space, pharmaceutical space, uh, creative industry. Uh, we can go on and on. Uh, but what specific interventions are you expecting or do you think is necessary at this time? I think at this time it would be prudent to actually hear from um, the CBN and the, C the CBN, the Monetary Policy Committee, and uh, no, um, it will be um, to, to, to preempt them would be um, jumping the gun. But I, if, if they're going to continue um, in the stance, that their predecessors have taken. So, I mean, agriculture, we know, has been on the front burner for both fiscal and monetary authorities. And obviously, because of the importance of agriculture um, to the economy, you know, agriculture is one of the largest, if not the largest contributor um, to GDP. And there are so many um, opportunities across the value chain. If we're talking about export proceeds now, you're telling away from hydrocarbons, we're going to be looking at um, agricultural commodities to boost our export process. So I think, I mean, the CBN may continue in that stance in intervening um, in that um, sector and other sectors of the of the real economy, so possibly maybe manufacturing. But again, don't let us go ahead of the Monetary Policy Committee. Don't let us go ahead of the CBN. Let's hear from them um, come February 26 and 20 and get there. And I, I, I agree with you. I, mean, my hands are up. I totally agree with you. Thank you so much. Really interesting having this chat with you. I've been speaking with Chief Economist 
Atilo, it's Nigeria, Ms. Damilola Akimbami. Thank you so much. Do enjoy your day.